Packers Vikings, the Packers fourth game. We're gonna, Vikings. Packers Vikings. That Michigan accent yeah. comes out every once in a while. Uh, week two. This was September fifteenth in Green Bay. Right? Yeah, it was in Green Bay. It was. Packers you improved yourself, to two. Guessing no. yourself ever since I know, you got the first I'm, one wrong. I'm gun shy. Uh, Packers improved to two and zero with a twenty one sixteen win over the Vikings. But in this game, the Packers went up fourteen nothing in yeah. the first quarter. Right. Then twenty one nothing. Right. And then. Uh, they never scored again after scoring on uh, their first three possessions. So it was their first three possessions, touchdowns, yeah. never scored again. Vikings came back. Delvin Cook, 154 yards, uh, 75 yards uh, to Thielen. Um, I'm just rattling off numbers now. No, but but the good. Vikings came back, Yeah, and uh, the Packers had to hold on. So it was kind of the tale of two halves in that it game. It was. Well, I think uh, th there was two things that jumped out to me about the Packers. First off, the, what you mentioned on their offense, this is what they do. This is what they do every week. They jump out on teams, and then they can't put you away. You know, they'll come out smoking. Hey, the New York Giants game, Rodgers throwing post, boom, boom. And then you look up at the start of the fourth quarter, and you go, damn, it's 17-13. They never put the team away. Washington Redskins, I think they were up 20-3. to Then all of a sudden, you look up in the fourth quarter, you go, man, the Redskins got the ball. If they go down and score a touchdown here, they win the game. You know, last week, same thing. It was, what, 21 nothing or what? You know, it was something like that. Yeah. This is this is so to me, that was like it, it, it was funny as I watched the game. I said, oh, this is who the Packers are. They were like this in week two. And here they are in week 15. They're still doing the same thing. Now, the other thing that showed up in that game for the first time, too, for the Packers is, you know, the Vikings were the team, I think, that showed everybody, hey, this Packers defense is good, but they have interior defensive line issues. And they broke a, a number of big runs and Dalvin Cook had a big day because they're inferior there. Um, the Packers controlled the game. You know, the Packers did two things. Geronimo Allison fumbled as they were driving one time. They were already in field goal range. They were up 21 uh, to 7 at one point. And LaFleur, instead of just kicking the field goal and making it a three-store game, he went for it on fourth and one. And the Vikings stopped them. The Vikings really did not. The Vikings were – so my big takeaway from the Vikings in general would be the offense. They had not found the formula that they have right now at that point. The bootleg run game, play action game wasn't quite where it needed to be or where it was. And the biggest thing is Kirk Cousins was in Strugglesville at that point. Yeah. I mean, again, if you remember, that was, you know, him – he missed a, a few big throws in that football game. And that was the theme for the next few weeks, you know, and especially that, that Bears game two weeks after that where he missed a number of ones, and that's when Adam Thielen came out. Yeah. But he missed some big throws in this game, and really all their points came off of three big plays. It really did. It was the Dalvin Cook big run. It was Kirk Cousins kind of scrambling in the pocket and dumping it off to BB, who set them up for a field goal. And then they had a huge post route. He threw to a touchdown for Diggs. Other than that, they really struggled, and Cousins threw a really dumb interception in the fourth fourth quarter in the back of the end zone. Kevin King was there in the end zone exactly. fourth quarter. Yeah, Cousins in the first game against the Bears. Yeah. Right, hit through just 10 times. Right. So he was 8 of 10. This time he was he threw 32, but just 14 completions. No. So you're right. Yeah, it's they've gotten into more of a rhythm. So you would say where these teams have come yeah. since week the two. The Vikings are better. The Vikings are better yeah. offensively. Right. Yes. Than the Packers, although the Packers, they were kind of getting their footing. Matt LaFleur, they were. Aaron Rodgers. There was the unknown of the Packers out. offense. You don't, think they've, you don't think they've gotten uh, measurably better? I don't know if I'm going to sit here and say measurably better. Have they gotten better? Yes, but I don't think measurably better. And I think the big thing I look at is their defense has gotten measurably worse. Hmm. Now, the one thing I'll say that's going to be interesting about this matchup that kind of just jumped out to me when I watched back the film was the Packers play like five across on the front a lot. And when the Vikings did want to run the bootlegs and do that kind of stuff, yeah. they couldn't do it. Preston Smith was always there. Zadarian Smith was always there. And I would think that could be a problem for the Vikings once again in this game, unless they can get the run game going and get that guy to commit. Yeah. Um, but, but either way, no, I think the Vikings are a better football team. I think the Packers are too, but I think the, pa the Vikings made a more, what do I just want to say, a bigger jump from then to now than maybe the Green Bay Packers did. All right. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.